Hi, I'm Katherine Warren, and I'm here for another mayoral update with Telluride Mayor Delaney Young. Welcome, Delaney. Hi, Katherine. So we are back at the Telluride Historical Museum because it's a great outdoor space, and turns out the summer is all about finding quiet, socially distanced outdoor space to spend some time in. Um, before we get started on the mayoral update, I just want to give a quick plug to the awesome folks at the museum. They've been doing these great walking tours. I don't know if you've had a chance to do any of them, Delaney, but they do a pandemic walking tour of Lone Cone Cemetery. I'm sorry, Lone Tree Cemetery. There's another Lone yeah. <laughs> area of the cemetery, and they go through um, individuals who died in 1918 and 1919 as part of the Spanish flu pandemic, and I've heard it's really fascinating, and that is every... I'm going to say weekly because I cannot remember the day of the week off the top of my head, but you can go to Telluride, telluridemuseum.org to learn more about that tour. And then they will also be starting up historic walking tours of Telluride as well. Two fabulous outdoor activities to learn about our wonderful historic treasures that we have here in Telluride. And one of the reasons we're doing it at the museum is because we thought it would be interesting and fun to have some of these interviews at historic properties in Telluride. And the museum has so much to offer. And you can see in the background some of our old mining <laughs> equipment from Telluride, yeah. which is fun. Speaking of history, I'm not going to lie, we're in a pretty historic time period right now. As we speak, local officials and state and national officials, we are all in historic times. And locally here, Delaney Young is leading, <laughs> leading the amazing efforts to address this pandemic. So Delaney, on Tuesday, you had a, one of your regular town council meetings, full day of work, mm -hmm. not to be confused with the special town council meetings that have been happening now on an as needed basis. Is that correct? They were weekly for a couple of months and then we decided to take a break and they have now become as needed. Mm -hmm. We've only had one okay. special meeting since then, which is good. We all could use a break. Yeah. COVID fatigue, it's a new term. Yep, and Zoom fatigue as well. Oh yes, <laughs> Zoom fatigue. It's fun though to learn all the different rules for yeah. Zoom. Yeah. You know, how to turn off chat so that you don't have to worry about that extra layer. It gets a little complicated. Yes. So, um, <laughs> oh man, all the Zoom meetings every yeah. day. It's just... <laughs> Zoom, zoom, zoom. Um, so at this this week's town council meeting, you guys had a pretty healthy mix of regular discussions, and then of course the given the COVID discussions. Uh, I thought we'd start with just business, regular business that the town of Tyred has been conducting lately. And one of the exciting pieces that I heard when I was tuned into the meeting via Kodo, by the way, they stream it live on air. Uh, which is amazing. You can hear it locally or from your car as you're commuting to work, as I did. Um, the town park master plan. Obviously, town park is a huge resource for the town of Telluride. It's where our festivals happen. It's where kids play soccer. It's the softball uh, season. And uh, can you tell me and uh, the viewers a little bit about the master plan and what happened at Tuesday's meeting in relation to that? Yes, I'd love to do that. The town parks because it's all the parks not just the mm -hmm. town park Thank you. the master plan has been getting worked on for i want to say a good year and a half or close to it the design team that they have hired to do the overall collating of information and collecting the summaries of public comment is zarin and associates and they are fabulous it's been a pleasure to work with them the Parks and Recs Commission Board has been working so hard on this for such a long time. And what was brought to council was the latest summary of what has come about after all of this time of work from the board and com the commission itself and from public comment, council comment, staff comment, etc. And it's an overview of the town park, which is the main area and hub of activity for many things, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. including a pool that we have. And, and a fabulous campground that I camped in last month and had a blast there. Yes, our campground is fabulous. It's beautiful. And Hanley Pavilion, of course, which houses hockey. And in the springtime, there's also some 
high school sports that go in there and use a turf area. But we also have pocket parks in town, four of them, and we also include the river corridor on the parks plan. So in seeing that summary, there are, and it's a master plan, this is the part that people need to really understand. There are ideas that things could occur in the years to come to improve those areas or expand uses in those areas until they actually are ready to be tackled it's not set in stone that those will happen. It's a master plan with options. A guiding document, so Exactly, to speak. perfect mm -hmm. example of how, what to call it, Catherine, <laughs> a guiding document. And it's really nice to see it come to fruition after all this time. There's a lot of amazing ideas and now it will go uh, back to just kind of collect all of those things even further and narrow things down and we have a little bit more time to inject ideas if necessary and then we get to start talking about it at budget time oh fun yes <laughs> so there's no guarantee when something might happen when a project may be implemented and they're still working on finishing up the hanley pavilion expansion right now which was of course delayed it started in i think March <laughs> and then great timing <laughs> got shut down but they're making really good headway and we hope to have that project done around January okay so we will talk at budget time about what the next five-year capital improvement plan looks like the the parks. top items of what you'd like to see happen from the master plan exactly was the master plan adopted at Tuesday's meeting or was it just a first reading presentation it was a work session okay a work session yes so when it's time it will come to us for approval so to speak okay yeah wonderful yeah um in other non-covid news which <laughs> i just it's funny how excited i get about non-covid things these days um you also uh you adopted the model traffic code is that correct we did so uh <laughs> for me as a resident of telluride what what does that mean or why is that exciting and important the model traffic code is a tool that comes down from the state and at least this one for us and it's all the various traffic rules you could possibly think of tail light out speeding not wearing your seat belt texting while driving anything related to operating a motor vehicle and we hadn't updated ours in a long time we reflect the model traffic code in our own municipal code this one is from 2018 and we decided to adopt it and utilize some of the changes that were made at the state level but then we also delete items that have no bearing really such as stoplight traffic law because we don't have any stoplights <laughs> and we have a slower speed limit than almost anywhere around in this state and therefore some of the things that are associated with higher speed limits don't really pertain but we did also and address certain items such as low powered scooters and mm. e-bikes things that have become bigger in you know outdoor usage more popular if yeah. you will and it's really to just keep things in line with the state so that when people are traveling throughout the state they understand that when there's a rule it's probably the same rule in another town in right. the same state it makes it easier i guess for enforcement of those things right. but it's a lot <laughs> there's a lot to it well that is a perfect segue delaney you read my mind <laughs> um, since we last spoke this uh, governor of colorado implemented a statewide face mask order uh requiring uh in the use of the wearing of masks inside any public place and or place of business public transportation and I don't know about you, but I feel that a statewide order has hopefully is helping visitors who come to our state know that it is a requirement wherever you go in the state of Colorado and not having to keep track of certain laws in Telluride versus Montrose versus, you know, other cities along the I-70 corridor. So on that note, how's the, um, how's now, the mask ordinance going? Now we're into the COVID yeah, stuff. Yeah, so just Darn right it. into COVID. <laughs> we had our own 
mask ordinance in town, and the Mountain Village had one as well that mm -hmm. was very similar. A few weeks ago, and prior to the governor adopting this order, we had already started talking about expanding our face covering ordinance. It's an emergency ordinance. We thought what we had done had been successful enough that it was good that we had it in place, yet we decided from public comment we were receiving, witnessing ourselves situations that seemed a little uncomfortable, it's close quarters in Telluride, it gets very tight. And we decided to expand ours to include anywhere outdoors where you cannot maintain six foot distance or more, which we have here in case you can't tell from the camera, for more than five minutes. If it's a very brief encounter and you're gonna just be near somebody for a few minutes, fine. A lot of people, understandably, do not like wearing a face covering while they're hiking or biking or doing anything exercise-wise. Totally understandable. Yet, we were hearing that people were still uncomfortable being in those situations where they may pass a group of 8 to 10 people, none of them wearing masks. In the event that you are somewhere outside in, pub in a public place, it's still in a public place, mm -hmm. on your own property, it doesn't matter. And there are exceptions, of course, if you are under the age of um, 10. Is ours 10? No, ours is 2. And the state is 10. The yeah. state is 10. This is where it all gets a little confusing because all these different municipalities um, have different ages, too. Anyone under the age of 2 is not required to wear one. If you have a confirmed medical condition that prevents you from wearing a face covering, then you are not required to do so. We have gotten documentation from the state, and it is ADA information, and it is very clear who should be or shouldn't be or sh can't wear a mask or a face covering, and it's very limited, actually. Mm -hmm. If you work alone in an office, you don't need to wear one unless somebody comes in. And if you're at a restaurant or a bar that is acting as a restaurant, when you sit down, you can remove your mask to enjoy your drink and your food. I think that we will probably keep that when we revisit this at our next meeting on August 25th. Okay. I personally today saw really great compliance downtown. Just I, everyone I was seeing, even people on the river trail, were wearing face coverings and so I applaud all of you. Thank you for looking out for all of us. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, Mountain Village does not have the extra add-on to our ordinance, but um, I was at the market on the plaza recently and people are wearing masks. The majority of folks are wearing masks. And on that note, I just, because I love this new mask I got from my <laughs> friend Deb. It's very cute. Has I mean, a smiley it's, face. It's a new fashion accessory. <laughs> People say that, you know, you can't tell when somebody's smiling. And so I thought it was very nice that she put a smiley face on mine. And then people will know that I'm actually smiling. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, on that note, um, if folks are in town or in a, you know, working and they're wearing a mask, is there a recommended course of action if there are visitors in town who are unruly about this mask order, which I really hope they're not unruly, but it has happened. It has happened. I think we're fortunate. There's been some horrible stories out of other states and cities when people have been violent. We have not heard any of that, I don't believe, thank goodness. I think we're really doing our best to be as friendly as possible and as civil as possible. And while someone may not want to wear a face covering, there's another person who may be wearing a face covering because they need to and they have to do things. I think if you are concerned and you notice someone is milling about and not following the protocol in as friendly a way as possible, Ask them if they have a mask or if they need a mask, and if you have an extra one, maybe give it to them. And I think above all, and we've been trying to say this this entire time, 
just please be kind and be respectful. That's all any of us want, what, no matter what our beliefs are. Mm -hmm. Just be kind and be respectful. Yeah. And if folks aren't kind and respectful back to you and it really requires some muscle, our local law enforcement has been responding to the few incidences that... They have, and segue for me now, Catherine, <laughs> thank you. At this meeting we just had on Tuesday, one of the topics we discussed was the idea of an information booth, which stemmed from our special meeting of the week before. While there wasn't a majority consensus that we wanted to go down the path of having an information booth at the entry to town, we have been also talking about the possibility of hiring some ambassadors for the Colorado Avenue area and the commercial core in general who could be that bridge between education and enforcement. That way, if someone does see something and is having a hard time, this ambassador could potentially talk the people through it. And then if it was to escalate, they could be the person who contacts law enforcement. It's hard mm -hmm. enough for the businesses trying to make it right now. We don't want them to feel this extra burden of having to call in law enforcement yeah. if something happens. We're still working through that and we're hoping that could be implemented in the not too distant future. Wonderful. And on through the winter perhaps. Sounds like we might need that through the winter. Yes. <laughs> and I think the ambassador program is great because if you may be hearing, folks are coming into town from different directions this summer due to the four wheel drive roads. Um, and so they might not get caught on their way into the spur, but if they're out and about in public places, it's easy to get their attention in downtown Telluride because yeah. it's quite small. <laughs> um, let's see here. What have what else have we not covered, Delaney? Oh, oh, census. Oh, yes, the census. I made this announcement at our meeting and then again at the county commissioner meeting. Because of COVID, the census collection time had extended through the end of October. That has now changed at the national level. They decided they didn't want it to go through the end of October for whatever reason. And it is now ending on September 30th. This is the self-reporting and the um, filling it out, basically. Right. And then they have to take the time to collate all of the information. So that is the last day. And that has also sped up when people are going to come knock on your doors. If you have not done the census, our area is a little more complicated because the majority of the people who live here have PO boxes. Right. Census is tied to your physical address. If you have not completed your census and your address is not showing up in the report, someone is going to come knock on your door. And starting next week on August 11th is when this is going to occur. Right. If you don't want strangers coming to knock on your door during COVID, please do your census. It's so easy. I have a family of five. It literally took nine minutes and that's because I got interrupted twice. So <laughs> it's, it's not hard and it can really, really help our county and our state to do right. this. There was one more piece of information that came out with the announcement that they were shortening it by a month and that is undocumented folks mm -hmm. were being led to believe that they if they fill it out it will have negative repercussions right everything i'm being told is that is not true correct and we've tried to send that message out this entire time it is crucial that every person get counted it means about over the course of the next 10 years, $20 million coming into just our county. Right. And the state is in a position to get another House of Representatives elected official at the national level. And there's a couple of those seats that are uh, in flux right now. And we are one of only a few states that have that opportunity. Right. And um, so if you've, Let's use me as an example. I have a P.O. box. I filled out my census. I entered my physical address. So once my 
do, since I've done that, then we, there will not be a census taker at my door. Correct. Hopefully. <laughs> no, there I don't care. There shouldn't eh, be. Come on by. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> there shouldn't be. Okay. And we're on par with where we were 10 years ago. We have now slightly exceeded our response rate. It's only 31% and a little fraction above that. It, while we've met our response rate from last time, which is great, it's only 31%. It would be amazing if we could get more up there. Yeah. 100 the state, would be ideal. Obviously. I mean, when I last looked, the state was at, for the whole state, it was at 60 some percent. Yes. So let's at least try to match the state's level. Yes. Like we can get there. Spuck. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Filming outside <laughs> on plein air. <laughs> um, the, the day this comes out, I believe you will be uh, just finishing or starting an IG meeting, intergovernmental meeting, which I think is um, a great thing that San Miguel County governments have been doing for a while now, where every four months, I believe, three to four months, yeah. um, each of our regional government entities hosts the intergovernmental meeting. And August 10th, it is hosted by Town & Telluride. Yes. So there's some pretty um, meaty uh, topics on the agenda. I think we're up to seven topics and they are primarily COVID related. Shocker. I know. <laughs> and that's okay. That's what we're all in. We are up to here and yeah. maybe here. Yeah. And one of the items that came on late to the agenda, if anyone out there saw the agenda, it did get reposted because we had two late items come on. Amy Levick is going to be on there talking to us about real estate trends here and in other mountain communities and how that is affecting housing for long-term locals who are renters mm -hmm. and what that might look like. And some of us fear that it is the start of potentially a new and different housing crisis than the one we have been facing for years already. Right. So we're going to try and be proactive and talk about it on the 10th and see if we can plan ahead at all for some of this. Great. There's some things governments can plan ahead for. There's <laughs> other things like a pandemic that's quite tough to anticipate. But, um, yeah. On that note, I think our time here is coming to an end. <laughs> Plenty of things to discuss that we could discuss and dive into, but we can just leave it there. But Delaney, is there anything else you'd like to add to to viewers before we wrap this up. Thanks, Catherine. I usually do the PSA for COVID stuff. Please, if you need information, go to the San Miguel County website, sanmiguelcountyco.gov slash coronavirus. They have a new dashboard. New it's and amazing. Dashboard. It's great. Such a website nerd these days. <laughs> and you can get all kinds of information there. Anyone who is a local or regional small business owner, the Energize Colorado program through the state should be live any day now. If you are online and you're looking for additional assistance, go to Energize Colorado, do a Google search, it will take you to the um, information and you can sign up to be notified when it is live. If you or anyone you care about is really having trouble right now, please, please call the Center for Mental Health or the San Miguel Resource Center. There are people out here to help all of us and if you need help please ask for help if you see something say something but n no matter what be kind that's my tagline be kind <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you so much delaney thank you Catherine. thank you telluride tv and Kodo. even though this isn't you right now <laughs> you guys are awesome and you're helping so much in the community right yeah. now getting the news out all right, well, we'll talk in another few weeks. Okay. It'll be here before we know it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks.